right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Monday morning. If you're a science fiction writer or a uh, science fiction or a fantasy writer, and I'm not really sure what the fine line is between science fiction and fantasy, um, you might be interested in a workshop. And if you are thinking it's going to be right here in Ocala, you're wrong. It's out in Hollywood, California, but you're welcome to go to it. It's happening in just... Um, well, I guess about two weeks or so from now. Uh, and we've been talking about it a lot lately. There was, it's such a, a big and powerful opportunity for writers that we wanted to make sure we got the word out about this. We had a story this morning that just blew us away. And, uh, it was portrayed as a true story, but it was a guy who basically called himself... Like he was 60-something years old, and he made a phone call to himself when he was 21 or, 20, or thir- 31. And it was just just an amazing story, and uh, I have no idea if it was fact or or true, but probably not. And the more I think about it, I mean, at the time I was so wrapped up in the story, I thought it was real. But now thinking about it, it just doesn't seem like it could be real. Uh, Scott, but but how much of science fiction becomes fact, right? Who knows? Uh, Scott Parkin is on the phone. He's a professional social and cultural nomad. Oh, I like that. That's his, that's the first thing in his, on his biography right there. Uh, he plays operatic guitar and bass guitar. He's a technical communicator in the computer industry and an award-winning author at the L. Ron Hubbard Writers of the Future Awards for his story, Purposes Made for Alien Minds. Oh, that's cool. This guy's got both sides of his brain working. The creative side and the technical side, right? Uh, He's on the phone to talk to us about the workshop I was just um, um, telling you about. And um, it's on the 29th and the 30th out in Hollywood, California. Scott Parkin, good morning. It's an honor to have you on the show with us today. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Where are you right now? Where are you calling from? So I'm calling from Orem, Utah, which is uh, a little bit south of Salt Lake City. All right. So, what, what's where does your brain go mostly to the creative side or to the to the technical other side? You know, uh, for me, there's no difference um, because it's storytelling. You know, even in technical writing, right? You're always telling a story. You're always trying to, to position the information you have for readers to read. Unlike the vast majority of computer documentation, which is what I wrote. Um, where it's just explaining something, if you want to actually engage readers and have them understand the material, you have to tell them a story about the use model for the software or about the kinds of things you can do with the hardware. Uh, So it's really no different to me that if you want to tell the story in a way that engages readers, you have to reach out to them and speak on their own terms. This is interesting, isn't it? I mean, the technology, if you think about it, is all about communicating, isn't it? I mean, we have... it really is. We have 3D printers, but even a 3D printer is printing something that will enable you to do something else. Well, and it's really easy to think in the abstract, right? To just talk about the printer as the printer and not assume a use model or the kinds of problems that humans have. But the fact is, that's what people approach the documentation set for. And it's the same reason people come to stories. They want to learn something new. They want to be engaged. So, yeah. I think and, kind of the same thing. And the, the first thing in your bio says you're a, a nomad. And, and, and in a way, that's what reading enables us to do. Uh, Disney World just announced over the weekend that they're going to have, what, 14 acres that's going to be dedicated to Star Wars, both in the park yeah. here in Florida and the park in California. And yeah. I thought, wow, that's just all about living inside of a fantasy, a fantasy that we're familiar with because we're so familiar with that story. Well, and part of the fun of that is, right, is that what the, what the fantasy does, whether it, whether it be, you know, a, a strange alien planet or whether it be, you know, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, is that it gives us just a little bit of cognitive uh, distance from subject matter so we can engage very difficult themes at a more personal level because we have this little layer of unreality between us and an otherwise really difficult subject matter. And that's part of what the what the fun of fiction is, is being able to, to you know, every three-fingered blue alien is really just the other, uh, whether that be, you know, um, someone of a different race or a different ethnicity or, or a different religious assumption. It just gives us that distance to be able to consider these questions in the abstract and to become better people as a result. Do you, do you think the, the science fiction writers who incorporates some kind of a redeeming message are, are um, more revered than the science fiction writers who just simply write about the spaceships and the, and the you know what I mean, that kind of, that kind of surface level stuff? And just you know, that, 
Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's one of those arguments that's really interesting because a lot of writers say that you should remove any sense of theme or meaning from your fiction and just tell a, a good rollicking adventure. And I'm not sure that's possible. Um, but yeah, I think writers that do that knowing what they're doing and keeping the, the, those things under control can, can meet us in both worlds, right? They can entertain with the, with the exciting and the shiny and the, and the exotic at the same time that we're informed about ideas, issues, and questions that are worth considering. Do you know one of my favorite stories was 2001 A Space Odyssey, and I call it a story rather than a movie because I was so into this movie when I was a kid that uh-huh. I, bought, I bought the book and, and read the book. I even read the making of the movie book. You know, <laughs> I, I was so into it. But, but I always thought about it. It's not one of those stories that really has a good versus evil message. It, it, yeah. does, it doesn't have that. It's, it, but yet it makes you wonder about, about things. It makes you wonder. I guess that's probably the bottom line. Well, it really was. And it was, it was to a degree, you know, uh, Clark addressing the question of religion. Um, and whether there was there were rational explanations for things that we tend to think of as spiritual or mystical, and in that exploration of that question, right, he he ended up giving us just a fascinating world and asked a lot of really interesting questions. And I think that's the difference between some of the more interesting fiction and the and the less interesting, is that good fiction asks questions and allows you to explore answers on your own time. Less good fiction tells you what the right answer is, according to the author. And with hmm. your uh, uh, technical writing prowess, you have uh, scenarios that happen in everyday life that you can expand into the science fiction and fantasy writing. Absolutely. In fact, you know, having worked in enterprise software development for 20-something years, um, I've worked with companies, I've dealt with corporate uh, security issues, regulatory issues, um, so I've had some insight by my professional work into parts of, of you know, corporate America and corporate Europe and corporate Asia that most people don't get insight into, and that gives me a really interesting set of foundations now for telling stories about, you know, my uh, Planetary Assessment Corporation, which is a huge multi-world uh, uh, exploration conglomerate, so... Yeah, oh, wow, wow. Do, do you have the, the luxury of being able to see models of your vision? Uh, like, like, I don't know what you would make the model out of, but you know how you see sometimes these... Uh, I, I mean, I, I guess it takes a lot of money to build these things, but... Oh. You, do, do you know what I'm saying? Like when you go, I, to, when you go to a museum of something, it's like a science museum. They'll, they'll show yeah. you this room-sized model of, of something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I grew up in the Chicago area, and one of the fun things out there was that uh, the Museum of Science and Industry actually has a replica of a working coal mine inside the museum. It's a great museum. I love that museum. It's an extraordinary place. And, and that idea, right, being able to see the visualization of both real technology and imagined technology is just so much fun. Um, that's why film is, is one of those powerful uh, uh, media going right now, because it gives you some of that visual uh, spectacle that's just fun to, to engage with. We, we've talked about it so much, th- about uh, how science fiction seems to have given us ideas that m- became reality. Uh, yeah. and, and you could argue whether it's, it's like psychic in nature, like predicting you know, precognitive or something, or is it simply... St- somebody's imagination stim- stimulating somebody else's logic and therefore the two come together and we have a cell phone or, th- or that kind of thing. I-, I think it's a little bit of both, right? Because going back to Arthur C. Clarke, you know, he was one of the first writers to speculate the idea of uh, geosynchronous uh, satellites. Right. But the right. fact is the idea was well understood and because he had a scientific background, what he was able to do as a storyteller was look at potentials and then extrapolate things that scientists don't have the luxury to do because they're too focused on solving specific problems. So that's where I think scientists and, and science fiction writers can really work together. One can help extend the, the potential of science. The other, having seen another person's vision, can say, ooh, a problem to be solved. 
could we get there from here and then set about to doing it? Wow. Uh, we need to take a little break, and we'll be right back. Uh, I've got so many more questions, plus, of course, we want to get the details about the workshop at the end of the month. Um, and uh, I think one of the questions I want to ask is regarding who makes the better science fiction writer, the guy who has the science background or the guy who does not, or lady, doesn't the big guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll take a little break and be right back with Scott Parkin after the break. This is The Source, WOCA. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy, never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results and all but given up on my sex life. Then I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Mayo treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. John Nottingham with the Miami Dolphins here. Proud to be this year's chairman of the Special Olympics Champions for Champions event. Come join players from the world of professional sports sharing their stories with a great dinner on Friday, September 18th and or play at Candler Hills Golf Club on Saturday, September 19th. Either way, you'll be helping the Special Olympics of Marion County Champions for Champions. Call 988-7998 for details. That's 988-7998. Please help our Special Olympians. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that, I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, times of clouds and sun with a couple of afternoon thunderstorms around high 87 to 91. It'll be a shower with thunderstorm this evening and partly cloudy later tonight, though 73 to 77. For tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds. Best chance of any thunderstorm in the afternoon, the high 89 to 93. For Wednesday, partly sunny. A good chance for a thunderstorm or two, high 89 to 93. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. All right, Scott Parkin is on the phone. We're talking about uh, science fiction. We're talking about writing. We're talking about being creative and uh, everything of the sort. And if you are, and if those things come together for you because you are a writer, then uh, then you probably have been seduced. I'm going to use that word here um, by contests that invite you to submit your work, and you pay a dollar amount in order for them to submit your uh, to uh, review your work. And then at the end of it all, you probably didn't win. Because there's usually one winner, or maybe three at the most, and uh, you know, 400 to 4,000 people who submit. And so sometimes it could, you can be, I'm not saying that they're all bad, um, but I'm guessing that a lot of them are very disappointing, and it's probably debatable as to whether that's a good avenue for getting your work published. What I love about the Writers of the Future um, Contest and the, and the workshop is what we're going to talk about. But I love about this: a, it's free, and b, they give you feedback that'll that'll actually make you a better writer. Just because you you don't win doesn't mean you don't benefit, you know. And I think that's one of the good things. Scott, did you ever enter the contest yourself? You know, I'm actually something of a uh, of a legend with the contest because I've submitted for more than 25 years. Oh wow. Uh, I was a finalist five separate times, the only person ever to be a finalist that many times without winning a prize, before I finally, on my fifth try, won a prize. Wow. Part of my problem was that I was too busy writing technical material, so I wasn't focusing enough on writing fiction. Uh, and when I finally made the turn and, and put all my focus here, I was able to win the contest. Is, isn't it amazing how the judge, have you ever been a judge? I have not been a judge, so I'd certainly love to talk with them about uh, being involved. Is, uh, are you going to be one of the panelists at the at the uh, at the workshop? You know, uh, I'm not going to be able to be there for the one this month, but I uh, do hope to be there for the winners' workshop uh, in 
in April. Oh, okay, uh, okay. But I, I will try to get on the agenda for future workshops. I'm so fascinated with the way this whole organization works as far as coming together with creative people, not charging them to be a part of this, and, right. and, and then having an opportunity to if you win, to actually get your work published, and if you don't win, to still benefit from the expertise of the judges. Right. You know, and that's that's part, part of what makes this contest different from pretty much any other contest that you enter, is that this contest really is designed to discover and encourage new talent to write and to succeed. So it really is the premier pro-talent uh, discovery contest in the industry. Um, and as you said, there, there's you know there's been the annual workshop uh, writing workshop for for prize winners, and now starting this year, they've actually made a reduced version of that workshop available to anyone that wants to come out to, to Hollywood and take it. All right. So can I tell you so, uh, in the beginning, I introduced you with a story from this morning, and can I tell you what it was? Because I have it in front of me now. Okay. There was a Albert Einstein theory in 1907. That uh, he might be, he might figure out a way to send light uh, f- light signals faster than light itself, and therefore be able to communicate with anybody who had a communication device in the right. past, which would be a phone. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so, I, I guess to wrap it up, it's like you could call your past self as long as your past self had a phone. A, as a scientist, is that possible? And B, as a writer, is that is that already worn out subject? Well, one of the fun things about about Einstein, right, was that uh, you know you look at the work he did with Heisenberg uh, and some of those folks, and the idea that space is curved. Well, if you can cut the curves off, you can actually travel faster than the linear distance because you can actually you know think of a folded sheet if you can penetrate through the layers rather than following along the surface okay you could get to the far distant point faster than seems to be theoretically possible and that's what einstein was talking about it's that idea that if you could penetrate over distance um back to a source in time you could actually call yourself uh so te- you know theoretically it's absolutely possible now, technically, that's a different problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fact is that the, the warp drive of Star Trek has been proven theoretically possible. Wow. Uh, that is been, amazing. Uh, demonstrated as theoretically possible. So, now the engineering problem is, is before us to try to figure out how to implement it. Right, right, right. And that's what's wonderful about the uh, workshop because um, writers write and it's different than speaking like we're speaking right now. And you've got to learn how to really uh, do setup in stories, dialogue, be able to write uh, descriptively. And that really is something that will be focused on during this workshop. Well, it really is. And the workshop is, is excellent because part of what it does is try to, to help you learn the tools necessary to be a successful pro. And part of that's pragmatic. Um, so many writers get caught up in this idea of they have this one great story and they're going to spend 30 years working and refining it. Whatever else is true, L. Ron Hubbard produced huge numbers of titles. The guy was an absolute machine in producing fiction that was very readable and, in fact, more literarily valid than most of his contemporaries. Uh, and that's part of what this workshop helps you do, is figure out how to unblock your own assumptions about the way that fiction is created and get to the business of writing good, high-quality, sellable fiction. So um, when, when you were talking about Arthur C. Scott before and his the, the way he took 2001 A Space Odyssey and made us kind of question why we believe in things or why, or how we interpret things, uh, that, uh, for example, if if you brought a, a car into the past somehow, the the people who right. see it might think, "Oh my gosh, this must be created by a by a, a superior uh, civilization or something like that." Which which we are. I mean, we're that, we are superior civilization to than mm-hmm. the past. Um, <clears throat> well, we just have to wait for the technology to be invented, and that's what's great about the human mind. There, there are no boundaries, and when you're a writer, you can create any kind of a universe. Well, and there is a, a thing that, that Arthur C. Clarke is kind of famous for called Clarke's Law that says any technology sufficiently advanced is indistinguishable from magic. 
And that's exactly what he illustrated there in 2001, A Space Odyssey, that if you brought back a technological device to, to beings that had no concept of it, that it could change them at a fundamental level and kickstart their own evolution toward being able to produce exactly that same kind of technology. Wow. Wow. Is uh, this a workshop good for people who write screenplays also and not just novels you know, or short it is. stories? Um, it, it's not specifically about writing screenplays, but part of the, the f- reality of the modern market, the, the fact of the way the markets are, is that if you're not writing with uh, film adaptations or TV shows or video games uh, or Internet media in mind, you're, you're shortchanging yourself. So that very visual... Uh, way of presenting stories is is very important and is part of the basis of the workshop. So, so when do you know? Can you answer the judging questions? If if somebody were to submit um, a manuscript, is it is it limited to a certain number of words or pages? What do they have to know? Yeah. So, as far as entering the contest, it's open to anyone who's not already a pro, which is defined as having sold three, sh- uh, having published three short stories or one novel. Uh, in a in a major venue, um, the word limit is seventeen thousand words, so it's fairly long. Uh, of course, it's absolutely free. You can submit uh, by mail or by email uh, electronically. Uh, subject matters are wide open. the The one caveat would be that these are that the anthology is intended for general audiences and, and is in fact used as part of an educational program in both uh, uh, middle schools and high schools and at the university level as well. So, you know, try to keep a little, show a little restraint in some of the details, but, you know, th- they're pretty wide open. Um, do, you, do you have a story in the new one, the th- uh, Volume 31? I do. I've got a story in Volume 31 that's uh, uh, Purposes Made for Alien Minds. A- and in my case... Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. Actually, I, I kind of followed a different path than most uh, in that mine is, a, is an experimental science fiction piece. After being... A finalist four times, having been a semi-finalist, I think thirteen times. Wow! Um, I was trying to figure out how to get over that last line, and just on a lark, I, I took a chance and I wrote a a highly structured uh, experimental story written entirely in five word sentences, from the point of view of a character who had been meme limited to five word thoughts. Oh wow. wow! That's fascinating. Wow! That must have been a challenge for you. It was a very it was a fun and difficult writing experience because, you know, that exercise of trying to dive deep into this character's point of view and and reimagine how he might express himself in these five-word snippets created just a whole new set of, of insights into what that character was like. Um, and that's part of the fun, right, is that you, you take your shot, and that's one of the great things about science fiction and fantasy is that that kind of creativity or that kind of you know, stretching the narrative form is part of what we do, as well as se- uh, stretching the settings and the situation. We, we could probably discuss at a l- longer piece of time uh, how your musical background might have contributed to that, because songwriting is about writing short little phrases. Mm-hmm. It is, and and you know that idea that you want to, and frankly, technical writing is the same way, right? The number of bullet lists, the number of you yeah, know, yeah. headings as information in a in a longer text, all of that is a way of condensing information into into small, easily delivered uh, uh, bits, uh, and that's part of what fiction is about. So yeah, everything is useful in fiction. No matter what your experience is, it's all useful. Even, even the phrase, in the galaxy far, far away, has six words. You'd have to take away one far. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Scott, thank you for being on the air with us. Give us um, uh, a website. We've got 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, if you want to find out more about the uh, Writers of the Future workshop, go to galaxypress.com slash WOTF-writing-workshop. And it'll give you information on how to, how to join the workshop. And from there, you can also get information on the uh, Writers of the Future contest itself. And I highly recommend you uh, that people enter. Yeah, me it's too. Me too. Spectacular entry point to the market. Scott, thank you so much for being with us. It was an honor. I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention to the clock. I have to wrap it up. But thank you so much. We'll be right back. <laughs> 
Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. A small, short earthquake shaking up some residents in the San Francisco Bay Area today, but no injuries or damage reported as for possible aftershocks. This is only a approximately magnitude 4, so wouldn't expect too much, but we certainly could have some aftershocks. Dan Blakeman of the U.S. Geological Survey. More drones in the air. The Pentagon plans to boost its number of drone flights by 50% over the next four years. According to the Wall Street Journal, the Pentagon also will increase the capacity for lethal air strikes. The Pentagon believes that will give military commanders access to more intelligence in hot spots such as Ukraine, Iraq, Pakistan, and Syria. Fox Radio's John Decker. Traffic deaths are up 14% of the year's first six months. The national